Hi dear students, in this special series on subject wise strategy, we are going to identify all the important topics that you must keep in mind before you start working on a subject. We will be looking at the trend for each subject and then mapping it to all the tasks in the app so that you can prepare better and score better. In this video, we will look at the strategy for oral radiology and we also need to understand that radiology in true sense is distributed amongst all disciplines of dentistry. So you will see a lot of parallel topics with radio and opath like without a doubt, but also with endo, with perio. So anything that has to do with clinical uh, dentistry will have radiographs. But with regards to this specific subject over here, we are going to look at more of factual questions, more theoretical and specific to radiology uh, in true sense. Now the trend of radiology, uh, you are expected to see seven questions in your exam, but it keeps fluctuating because sometimes a lot of radio diagnosis questions are distributed in different uh, subjects, but factual questions keep appearing from time to time and that is what we are going to see in this video. Now, as you can see the left side, the topics are very specific to uh, the basics of radiation sciences. So we have basic radiation physics, biologic effects of radiation, then safety, then extraoral radiography, types of films and artifacts, intraoral radiography and projection geometry and radiographic diagnosis. So consider that radiographic diagnosis is by default a part of oral path. Okay, Some questions in oral path will correspond to this fact. But rest of the topics belong solely to oral radiology, right? On the right side, we have all the previous year need questions and we will assign them one by one to the topics. So let's start with 2023 need question. Eight film survey consists of and that is two anterior occlusal, two bite wing, two posterior occlusal and two molar radiographs. So like you can see, it's blinking on the left. It's assigned to the intraoral radiography topic. Radiation in cancer therapy is measured in the unit gray. That's a basic radiation physics question. Areas of light and dark appear as dark in radiographic film due to high contrast. Then we have a complex odontome on the x-ray. So this question, like I said, could also belong to diagnosis. That is OM, oral medicine and radiology and opath. Now this tooth over here on the radiograph shows a radiolucency which is suggestive of internal resorption. Then we have a radiograph. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, picture based image, image based questions also, which you can expect and a lot of radiographs. So you can see a lot of scattering There is cupping artifact, beam hardening and scatter. And the question is, this is seen as artifacts in digital CBCT. Then a patient comes for routine dental checkup, accidental investigation, reveal the presence of a cyst, identify the uh, cyst over here, if you can see clearly, that's portrait odontogenic cyst. Then identify the anomaly, as you can see over here, this is sialdocytis, sausage string appearance. Then an artifact. In the given radiograph is due to insufficient cleaning of PSP as you can see this artifact. Right. The next question, an asymptomatic tooth has deep caries on occlusal surface and the radiograph shows radiopaque mass at the apex of the tooth and this is most likely to be a condensing ostitis. This is the mass they are talking about. Identify the structure marked with arrow. This is nutrient canal. This is a normal finding on IOPA of lower anterior teeth. Another normal finding anterior nasal spine seen on IOPA of maxillary anterior teeth. Then we have sigmoid notch identification. Then we have a radiograph that shows torodontism of a molar. Which of the following lesions show soap bubble appearance on radiographs? So a giant cell lesion will so show soap bubble appearance. Then a radiographic image of lamina dura. 
Identify the condition shown on the radiograph. This is a sialolith, a salivary gland stone, duct stone. What may be the cause of following OPG? There is distortion here. That's because of the right side of the lower jaw is placed backwards. Then here we have a cementoblastoma in the radiograph. Also read the question carefully whenever you have an image associated with a question. Now, whenever you uh, wish to read more about that topic and to find out other possible uh, questions that could come in the same topic, make sure that you read the explanation. The key concept will be more concise. It is meant to reinforce the concept in your mind. And you will also find a video explanation with a lot of questions. The video explanation will cover a lot of other parallel topics which will help you get a better insight of the topic and it will also help you eliminate a lot of potential options. So it's a good strategy to benefit from. Right, then the next question, zygoma is clearly visible on all of the following except so extra oral radiographs. So here extra oral radiographs part one is the uh, extra oral views and extra oral two are all the MRI, CBCT, etc. Okay, all the digital images. What is the structure marked by the arrow? It's a supernumerary tooth, right? You can see different radiographs. So the advantage of looking at the explanation and the video explanation is you will also see new illustrations and new images which will help you broaden your perspective with regards to the image based questions. Then radiolucent bod lesion in body of mandible that has been lying asymptomatic for years. This is a staphnase cyst if you can see here. Then mandibular molars here are showing torodontism. Second question on radiographic appearance on torodontism. Which of these is the most radio opaque lesion? Cortical bone is highly radio opaque. Then age estimation based on the radiographs. We will not go into the detail of the explanation, but you can expect many such questions, including uh, development of dentition and pediatric dentistry. Then this is a uh, reverse town projection important for identifying fracture of neck of condyle. Purpose of intensifying screen is to reduce the dose of radiation. So that goes in intraoral radiography and X-ray films. Which of the following structure is most radio opaque anterior nasal spine? You have to look at the options and then determine. Bone density of implant site is best diagnosed by CBCT. Full mouth radiograph contains 17 periapical and 4 bite wings. Structure marked by the arrow in the following OPG, sigmoid notch, second question on sigmoid notch so far. Radiograph used to assess the asymmetry of face because of deviated mandible is PSF. Then a big question on TLD, dosimeter, so that's radiation safety. In CBCT, what is the artifact seen when the size of object being imaged is smaller than the voxel size? Technical question on CBCT. Which of the following is not a fibrotic effect, biologic effect of radiation? When the X-ray tube is shifted to the right, the object shift towards the left, uh, towards the mesial teeth. The object is positioned labial to the teeth. You must understand this concept of slob rule, same side lingual, opposite side buccal. Next, sharpness of image is increased by small focal spot. First radiographic sign of osteomyelitis is blurring out of trabeculae. Then charge transferred across rows of detector in a bucket brigade fashion is seen in CCD. Difference between clinical alveolar crest and radiographic crest is factual question. Then one of the most popular question, best radiograph to view fracture of condyle. We saw the opposite of this question earlier. Which property of X-ray is utilized in intensifying screen? What is the effect of radiograph if there are scratches on the intensifying screen? You will see light spots on the radiograph. So that goes to artifacts. Then role of potassium bromide and benzotriazole in developer. They are restrainers. MRI used sequence used to assess soft tissue pathology. Factual question. And which of these structures hinders in imaging the roots of maxillary molars? So zygoma and zygomatic process of maxilla. So as you look at the uh, summary of the topics,
Radiographic diagnosis has maximum questions, but like I said, there will be a lot of more such questions in oral path. So keeping that aside, more questions are seen on intraoral radiographs and projection geometry and a lot on artifacts followed by extraoral radiography and much lesser on physics and radiation. So this should be uh, how you tackle the subject. Focus on what's more important and then also look at what is not asked very frequently. You cannot completely skip them because that would uh, you will not be prepared if there are any surprises. You must make sure that your preparation is wholesome. And for that you must do all the tasks that you can see under the subject. Now what is a task? A task is nothing but the basic uh, building block of any uh, topic. So if you want to prepare say factors affecting quality and quantity of x-ray, you view the video and there is a good amount of text. The explanation tells you everything that you need to know. There will be a lot of uh, images, illustrations, and there'll be a lot of flow charts that you can benefit from. Make a note of these in your workbook, in your notes, and then you practice questions and then take tests and then appear for the weekly checkpoint test. So this should be your strategy for oral radiology. And this is how you will be able to cope up with all the difficult and factual questions. Now with regards to oral radiology, because it has a lot of factual questions, you must make sure that you are laying emphasis on final strokes towards the end of your preparation. And now I will tell you how to maximize your preparation with Meritor's app. Now there are five things to keep in mind when you start your preparation for any subject at any given point of time. Number one is to start with tasks. Like I said, tasks are the building blocks. They are your foundation and fundamental for any subject. You need to start preparing for the task with the workbook. You, you must look at the video if you have any doubts regarding the topic and then practice questions and then you can take the test. Now, whenever you are taking a test or practicing questions, each question comes with the answer, explanation and key concept. The explanation will be elaborate. It will tell you everything that you need to know about the topic. It is a good source of taking down notes because a lot of additional questions can be asked from the existing explanations, right? And if you are well versed with the topic, you can just look at the key concept and reinforce the topic in your mind. Additionally, a lot of questions also come with multiple choice question videos, which are explanatory videos. They are going to talk about how to eliminate options, how to strategically focus on the question and additional knowledge that comes with the topic. So your first aim should be to complete all these tasks for a given subject and then move on to the next thing that is QBank. Now QBank or question bank is a collection of high yield extensive questions. They are clubbed together in uh, topics, they are clubbed together chapter wise and you will have more hands on experience on difficult and extensive preparation on these questions. Again, they will come with explanatory videos, explanations and key concepts. So once your tasks and QBank for a given subject are complete, you are good to appear for the weekly checkpoint tests. Now the tests are of two types in the app. One is the weekly checkpoint test and self-paced test. I'll tell you about the weekly checkpoint test first. So suppose if you are preparing one subject over the week, then at the end of the week, you will have a test which is going to focus on that specific subject plus the subjects that were previously prepared, right? So that kind of snowballs the entire revision strategy. You will have a repeated encounter of multiple subjects from time to time. So you do not forget, it's easier to keep these topics in mind when you constantly see them. So the revision is reinforced. Plus you also get personalized AI recommendations, right? So at the end of your test, based on your performance, you will get how many questions you answered, what was the score, how much was the negative marking, where are you lacking, what are your stronger points? And then it will tell you how much time to dedicate for a revision of your weaker subjects. So with this strategy, you will be able to focus on specific areas that are your weaknesses. Now that is an exceptional feature of Meritor's app. And the next set of tests is self-paced test, which you can take at any given point of time. These are subject wise tests. You can also have cumulative tests, multiple recall questions also incorporated in form of tests. And towards the end of your preparation phase, you will have a lot of volatile, factual high yield questions. Uh, in form of final strokes, which are again specialized tests 
to be able to remember these topics clearly before the exam. Now, once you come closer towards the end of your preparation, you will have access to this special feature of the app called Marathon. This is activated towards the end of your preparation where you will have 3500 plus high yield questions. High yield questions meaning they have the chances to uh, be seen in the exam because either they are based on recall questions or because they are based on important concepts that are repeatedly seen in the exam. So when you practice these 3500 plus questions, you will also enter an all India competition where you will get a fair idea as to how your performance is with comparison to your colleague. It's a great boost of confidence if you take it at the right time. And lastly, we have the all famous national mocks, which is a pan India or all India nationwide uh, simulation of NEET MDS exam. We conduct them uh, towards the end of your preparation in a few months to go. And every weekend you will have access to this special test. You will see a lot of new questions in national mocks, uh, which are based on important topics. So do not miss national mocks because it gives you a good hands on experience of the exam. It gives you an idea of time management because this is exactly according to need pattern. That is 240 questions and three hours with negative marking. So you, you kind of get a very fair and square idea of your performance because this is again an all India competitive uh, mock exam and you will get personalized AI recommendations here as well. Now they are more important for uh, national mocks too because uh, towards the end when you are revising you will not know which subject to pick up at what time and your performance in the national mock will be assessed thoroughly and you will get your AI recommendations which will tell you which subjects to revise. So make sure that you are making use of all of these features in the app. Now, apart from that, if there is any query that you have while solving your questions, if you have any doubts regarding any topics, you can always contact the faculty on the WhatsApp group. We are always here to help you. And I hope with this in mind, you will be able to channelize all your preparation strategy in the right direction. And I hope we'll be able to help you achieve your dream seat in MDS. Thank you so much and good luck from Team Meritors.